Hi, I'm James and welcome to my latest review which is Perry Miniatures Zulu Wall Zulus. There's 38 hard plastic figures in the box. Uh, come on, two different types of sprue. We have six of the standard infantry sprue. This has five warriors on each. Uh, now, they are armed with a variety of weapons. You've got knob carries, which is the club. You've got assegais, both the short stabbing and the long throwing one. And you've also got a large shield for every figure. So this is actually quite useful because by the time the Zulu War shields were starting to get smaller, these, however, will work from the beginning of the period. So you could actually use them pretty much any time from Shaka um, Zulu onwards. Now, one thing I do like with these figures is the fact that they have the minimal regalia. Very little of the full formal dress that you see used um, by some manufacturers. Quite useful because it gives a slightly wider spread to them. You could easily use them as um, nearby tribes. And also that wasn't usually worn in the field. Now, when you look at the sprues, you'll see there's an awful lot of heads. Now, there's not as many as there appear. Uh, because they are split into two types. We have five heads for the unmarried warriors, uh, which were generally the younger, less experienced ones, and five for the older, more experienced married warriors. Uh, the introductory guide in the box, which I'll talk about in a minute, will give you a bit more information with that. The way to differentiate them is the married warriors have got a ring uh, worn around the head. You'll see that a bit better when you look at the uh, painted figures later on because I've painted mine up as married. There's also a few extra heads for command type figures with a little bit more regalia on. Again, you could mix these in just to get a little bit of variation with the heads. Uh, I haven't bothered. I, I like to use them as the command figures. So moving on to the command or firearm sprue. There are two of these in the box. Um, two casualty figures on it. The one on the bottom left that you can see is laid prone and the one on the right is actually just been hit uh, and is in mid-fall. You've also got a kneeling figure which is designed specifically for use with the firearms. Uh, I'll talk about the firearms in a minute. Uh, you could use it with another weapon but I think it, you might struggle to find a weapon that fitted it. You've then got a nice standing figure, very imposing look uh, and he reminded me instantly of the chiefs on the hill uh, during the uh, epic film Zulu. So, firearms then. Now, Ian Knight has actually uh, estimated that about 25% of the Zulus uh, in 1879 were carrying firearms. It tends to surprise people um, when they first hear that. Most of them were the older muskets that we usually bought, not very reliable, uh, poor accuracy, uh, and you have six of them split between the two sprues. You've also got four Martini Henrys, uh, nice modern rifle carried by the British, and the implication is most of these were captured in Sanduana. So with ten muskets and rifles on the, on the two sprues, that means you can easily match the 25% um, armed with muskets, or you can do the majority of them uh, without. You could knock it down to uh, 36 that way. You might play around a little with the kneeling figure and get that up to the full 38. Uh, I actually tend to use the kneeling figures as uh, musket or rifle armed. Also in the box there are um, a pack of bases. The usual ones that you get with Perry miniatures. I haven't used them because I'm basing mine up for skirmish and I wanted round bases. These are just the standard squares, uh, some of them individual and some of them grouped. We also have the four page booklet um, which was written by Colonel Mike Snook, MBE PhD. Uh, very nice little account of the Zulus. Emphasises the uh, fact that you can use them outside the Zulu war. Uh, talks about the uh, the Boer trekkers in the 1830s. Um, nice little description of the different types of markings on the shields and how they were allocated between the different regiments. That's always a useful thing to have a look at uh, and it helps you when you're matching up the 
coloured shields to the married or unmarried uh, figures that you've made. There's also on the back page of it a uh, breakdown of the firearms or command for sprue, uh, just linking up which arms go with which. Slightly annoyingly, adjacent arms don't always seem to go with um, the same musket, so there is a little bit of an issue with that. You just need to watch for it. So, having looked at what you get, let's have a look with my usual level of appalling painting of what you can actually do with the figures. Uh, I've made up a few examples, let's see what you think. So when actually buying plastic Zulus there is another option which is the Warlord Games series. Now when I actually bought the box of these on a bring and buy, very usefully uh, the person who was selling them had actually put a sprue of the married Zulus by Warlord with it. Uh, I built up three of them and added them to the force. Um, when you look at them you, build, you can see them here and they are pretty compatible. Uh, you can use them mixed in the same unit. There are one or two slight differences in height. I don't see an issue with that. People vary in height. Uh, you, quite nicely, Warlord do actually have two things which aren't on the Perry. They've got a couple of small shields, which I quite like, just, just for a bit of variety. And they also have the ceremonial axe that was carried by senior commanders. I haven't bothered with that yet. I might come back to it when I've got a larger force. But for the small skirmish force I've got, I don't really need it. So what can you do with the box of these figures? Well it depends which rules you're using. If you're playing black powder uh, you're looking at on average because black powder units vary six to eight bases four figures on a base that means one box will get you one unit with a few spares. If you play the men who would be kings then as tribal units you need 16 figures per unit so you could easily build two units using 32 of the figures and you could use, easily use the two prone casualties as pin markers so that utilizes a couple more so you've got a few figures left over and then if you play in a majesty's name with the size of the game one box of this gives you a full force the only option that you're then missing is the witch doctor uh, and possibly a demon Easy enough to add that, a couple of those in metal would soon sort you out, and that gives you a full force. Uh, it's worth noting that they're not in the basic game, they are actually in the supplement Heroes, Villains and Fiends. Uh, and it's, I'm basing this around the first edition, I know a second edition is being worked on at the minute. So, there you go. You can now see what the uh, figures look like when they're assembled. 
quite easy to paint up to my standard at least uh, very nicely proportioned figures they look right I'm really happy with them um, and if you decide that you do want to pick some up uh, if I can ask if you are looking at it please consider clicking on the link in the description below which will take you to my Amazon page doesn't cost you anything extra to buy them but what does happen is I then get a small amount given to me by Amazon uh, which then I can use to buy more figures and do more reviews so if you are um, going to buy them at least please consider going via that and it'll help the channel grow there's also a link as coming up for uh, if you want to subscribe if you want to see more reviews please click on that and then you should get the uh, reminders coming through when I do <laughs> upload anything thanks for your time <laughs>